What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. Here, continuing our conversation about the Taproot proposal, the triple bundle of Bitcoin improvement proposals by the great wizard Peter Woody. And now we are talking uh, currently about the BIP Schnorr, uh, but we will continue later with the Taproot BIP and the Tap Script BIP. Uh, all heavily worked on by Peter Woolley and several other contributors. Uh, there are already many, many videos about Schnorr on the World Crypto Network, so check out the playlist and make sure uh, that you are up to date with the current and upcoming rule changes to your own Bitcoin full node. Uh, and whether or not you want to support this consensus layer change. Piers, we have already talked about the introduction of Schnorr, and today we will continue with the description that includes the design and some of the specification, which might get a little technical, uh, and then future optimizations that we can uh, further get into this protocol. Starting with the descriptions, we first build up the algebraic formulation of the signature scheme by going through the design choices. Afterwards, we specify the exact encodings and operations. So, the design. Schnoy signature variant, elliptical curve Schnoy signatures for message M and public key capitalized P. I will just read this as public key from now on. Generally involve a point R, an integer E, and S picked by the signer and generator G, which satisfies E, which is an integer, being the hash of R, uh, the point, and M, the message. And S times G, uh, which is the other part of the signature, equals R, the point, and E, the integer, times P, the public key. Two formulations exist, depending on whether the signer reveals E or R. So we have two ways of proving uh, here how, to, how the signature can or is valid. Either the signer reveals E, which again is the hash of R and the message, or he reveals R itself, uh, which R is the point on the elliptical curve sec P256K1. So signatures are E and S. So E again, a integer, right, that is this here, and S being the uh, other part of the signature, just a random integer chosen. Um, that signify, here again, E is the hash of the signature times the generator point minus the E integer times the public key tuple the message. This avoids minor complexities introducing by the encoding of the point R in the signature see the paragraphs encoding the sign of R and implicit Y coordinate further below in this subsection. And two, signers, uh, signatures are R and S, right? The other variant possible. And they satisfy S times G, the generator, times R or equals R plus the hash of R tuple M times the public key. This supports batch verification, as there are no elliptic curve operations inside the hashes, right? Very nice. Because uh, here in the hash, we have the generator point, right? And, and other integers. Uh, but here, uh, we only have in the hash uh, the R, the point, and the message. We choose the R operator to support batch verification, okay? So we will reveal R and S within the signature. Uh, and this means that we then have the opportunity of doing batch verification. Okay, so this is what is being proposed to be used in, in the Bitcoin protocol. Uh, the integer point R, or sorry, the point of the elliptical curve group R and S, uh, which is a integer picked by the signer, right? Okay, and again, we need S here for this part of the equation. We choose the R operator. I just read that. <laughs> Key prefixing. When using the verification rule above directly, it is possible for a third party to convert a signature, uh, which is now R and S, right? For key uh, public key P into the signature R and S plus A 
uh, times the hash of R and N for the public key P plus A G. And the same message for any integer A. Okay, A is then any other integer that we'll come up with. This is not a concern for Bitcoin currently, as all signature hashes indirectly commit to a public key. However, this may change with proposals such as SIGHASH no input, which is BIP 118. Okay, um, so because we hash the uh, public key to be the address, right? We already commit uh, to the public key uh, in advance before or when sending Bitcoin to this address. Uh, and because we have the commitment, then we can later rely on that while proving uh, the signature. Uh, however, here the issue is if we have SIGHASH no input, then we do not have a predefined or, or pre uh, yeah, a committed to public key because there is no uh, SIGHASH in the input. Right? Uh, or no input in the SIG hash, uh, the other way. <laughs> or when the signature scheme is used for other purposes, especially in combinations like BIP32 unhardened derivations. Uh, so BIP32 are hierarchical deterministic wallets, and there are some unhardened derivation, so that if you have the uh, uh, child key, you can derive the parent key as well. Uh, and this might be a concern here uh, also. To combat this, we use key prefixed Schnorr signatures, changing the equation to S times G equals R plus the hash of R and the public key and the message times the public key. So we actually include the public key within the hash here, uh, which is uh, all right because we already have the public key hashed uh, previously in the blockchain, right? So we can do this uh, equation. Encoding the sign of R. As we choose the R operator above, we are required to encode, to encode the point R into the signature. Several possible ways exist. Uh, so we need to get this R into the signature somehow, right? And we can do this several uh, or in different ways. Encoding the full X and Y coordinate of R, resulting in a 96 byte signature. Okay, so if we have both x and y coordinates of r, uh, which is a point on the generator curve, right, ellipsec p256k1, but then we have 96 bytes in the signature, which is rather large. We can, uh, uh, we, we can do some better. We could encode the full x coordinate, but only whether y is even or odd, like compressed public keys. This would result in 65 byte signatures. Uh, so, so this means we always have the x-coordinate and we only have the y-coordinate uh, if, if it is either even or odd. This is already used by some other uh, Bitcoin implementation here for compressed public keys. Uh, and uh, this, this is useful in some sense, but still 65 bytes. Uh, the third opportunity would be encoding only the x-coordinate and leaving us with a 64-byte signature. Uh, and, uh, spoiler, using the first option would be slightly more efficient for verification, around 5%, but we prioritize compactness, and therefore we choose option three, right? So many, or many things go into this decision. First, simply it's the smallest byte size that we have here on the blockchain level, right? Uh, this, it's even one byte less than having these compressed public keys, uh, including why only when it's even or odd. Uh, but we can skip this as well, because guess what? Uh, if you have the X coordinate, uh, you also know G, the generator curve, right? Because this is just slipsec P256K1. So you can simply apply X to the generator curve and you can see which Y it is. Uh, and therefore you do this calculation uh, on your own side, right? And that is why the first option, which you do not have to do the calculation because it is already provided to you with X and Y. And this is why this early version is more faster, around 5%, because the verifier does not need to, ver uh, to first compute y out of x uh, on the generator curve. Um, but uh, we do not uh, prioritize on uh, the speed of, verif of verification. In this specific case, we prioritize the size on the blockchain, uh, the thing that actually has to be stored long-term, the signature part. And this is just much, much smaller uh, 
uh, with the third option here. 64 bytes, that's a third smaller than uh, the encoding of full X and Y. Uh, and to be honest, we can handle this one elliptical curve computation very easily. Again, it's only 5%, uh, but we get 30% less lock space, uh, which also means 30% less fees for the user of such a method. Uh, so really nice. So uh, implicit Y coordinate. In order to support batch verification, the Y coordinate of R cannot be ambiguous. Every valid X coordinate has two possible Y coordinates. We have a choice between several options for symmetry breaking. Uh, and so, right, because this is a curve, uh, you can be either on this side or on this side of the Y axis, uh, on any point where we have the X. Uh, so th therefore we need to restrict us either to the positive or the negative side here. We need to break the symmetry. So the first choice would be implicitly choosing the Y coordinator that is the lower half, uh, which just means we use the lower half of the curve. Uh, the second would be implicitly choose the Y coordinator that is even, right? Uh, so th that would be the uh, every second um, Y coordinate. Uh, implicitly choosing the Y coordinate that is a quadratic residue that the, has a square root modular, the field size. Uh, and these are, again, three different ways here that we could uh, eliminate half of, uh, or break the symmetry and somewhat eliminate here half or, or more. The third option is slower at signing time, but a bit faster to verify, as a quadratic residue of the Y coordinate can be computed directly for points representing in Jacobian coordinates a common optimization to avoid modular inter in inferences for elliptic curve operations. Okay, so with this third option, we are a bit slower at, uh, at signing time, right? But the signing is done by the individual at uh, one time, okay? Uh, and because we are a bit faster at the verification part, which every full node has to do, not just today, but in the future, right? When they do initial block download, they have to verify everything. Uh, so all of these multiple, multiple peers will be faster if we use the third option here with the quadratic residual. And it is faster because we have this Jacob Jacobian coordinate, which is just some mathematical optimization uh, to do faster calculations. The two other options require a possibly expensive conversion to available coordinates first. This would even be the case uh, if the sign or oddness were explicitly coded. Option two in the previous design choice. So we therefore choose option three. Again, we want to have uh, in this specific trade-off that we are talking here, we want to have the burden on the signer and not on the verifier, right? Because the sign is a one-time event, the verification is done several, several times, not just today, but in the future. Um, and so the final scheme, as a result, our final scheme ends up using the signatures R and S, where R is the X coordinate of point R, okay? So the capital R is the point, and the small r is the X coordinate on the curve whose Y coordinate is a quadratic residue, and which satisfies S, which is this here, times the generator point, Right, so again, this is public knowledge, equals R, which is the coordinate uh, point here, uh, plus the hash of the X coordinate of, the co uh, of this point, uh, the public key uh, of the private key that we have generated ourselves, or the signer has, plus the message, which is the Bitcoin transaction with all the inputs and outputs, uh, times the public key again, okay? Uh, and this is then uh, what we put into the signature. Again, it, it is actually quite simple math, right? Uh, and yes, it, it, like the reasons why we choose this, I think is also quite uh, approachable, so to say. Uh, of course, this is high level stuff and, and we really are going in depth here, uh, but I think the design choices uh, are smart. Uh, we we uh, try to reduce this, uh, the stuff we put on the chain right? Uh, that is why we have here the encoding of the X coordinate only. Uh, so it's a 64-byte signature. 
and we very or we optimize here also for the verified for the validation for the verification. That's why we implicitly choose the y coordinate that is a quadratic residue, right? Uh, and this is then here the small r, which is only the x coordinate of a y point that has a quadratic residue. So again, uh, I think this is smart. Uh, I think this makes somewhat of a sense. Um, so, but before we continue here with the specification and the verification, I think we'll have a break now uh, because we've already covered quite a lot. Uh, and again, this is high level stuff. Uh, this I know is difficult, but I think it's very important knowledge to accumulate. Uh, and uh, the more I get over this, and again, we have already many, many videos here on the World Crypto Network, uh, the more I grog it and the more I somewhat understand what is going on here. Uh, and it seems to be a very good uh, solution uh, to many problems. And as Peter says here, it has many advantages and not too many trade-offs, uh, which is a rare thing to have. Uh, so a very beautiful system that I think uh, is worth to accumulate. Peers, if you like these technical shows and you would like to see more, uh, please consider donating to the TallyCoin Fund, uh, which we will use to get new microphones uh, for on roadshow uh, or on conference Bitcoin tribe gatherings uh, events to bring you even more high quality content in person uh, with all the peers that do, for example, contribute uh, to this awesome uh, BIP right here and the many others that we will cover. Uh, so, Peers, thank you very much for joining me today and see you on the next show. Bye bye.